Let's consider quantitatively the splitting of degenerate energy levels caused by a magnetic field, the Zeeman splitting. Here's the equation, the Zeeman splitting equation, the energy level splitting for splitting to and from singlet states is mu sub b, that's the Bohr magneton we introduced earlier, which has a value of 9.27 times 10 to the minus 34th joule per tesla. That's a proportionality constant. B is the external magnetic field. And then M sub L is the quantum number used to describe the various energy levels. All right, let's look at a more concrete example. Suppose we're going to go from a singlet state, a singlet S, a singlet S zero, this would be singlet S zero, to a, say, one P, a singlet P one state. And recall, we're going to decode this. This means that S is equal to zero, that's the singlet. L is equal to one, that's the P. And J then is equal to L plus S, that's equal to one, that's what that is. Down here, S is equal to zero, L is equal to zero, and J then is equal to L plus S, that's equal to zero. On the other hand, uh, here M sub J can only be one value, zero. But up here, m sub j can be minus one, zero, or plus one. So this has three degenerate energy levels here. And in the absence of a magnetic field, we can have transitions between these energy levels here, and up and down, and we'll actually draw them as double-headed arrows, one representing absorption, the other representing emission. All right, so you get a single peak if you now look at the spectroscopy of this particular transition. It's first in frequency. We'll get a single peak corresponding to these transitions. Now, when we add a magnetic field, I'll use the symbol B for magnetic field. A lot of chemists use H. I'll use B. What's going to happen? Well, the value of that singlet S0 state won't change, but here, what happens is that you get a splitting. I'm exaggerating this. The actual splitting here is very small compared to the energy level separation here. And here, m sub j, or in this case, we're using m sub l because we're going from a singlet to a singlet. m sub l equals minus 1, 0, and plus 1. Note that's the same because if s is equal to 0, we can use either the m sub j or m sub l quantum number. And since we're, for this particular case, using m sub l, Let's use m sub l. So here m sub l equal, well, let's see, the higher energy. So there's no negative sign here. So for a larger value of m sub l, we'll have a larger value of energy. So this would be m sub l equal plus 1. Here m sub l equals 0. And here m sub l equal minus 1. All right, so the value of for m sub l equals zero, the energy level splitting there is zero. So that's the same energy as it was. The energy level described by m sub l equals zero is not changed. However, the value m sub l plus one goes up, the value of m sub l minus one goes down. And this energy level splitting here, delta E, is equal to the Bohr magneton times the applied magnetic field times m sub l, in this case m sub l is plus 1, so that will be 1. So it's just the magnetic field times the Bohr magneton. Recall the Bohr magneton converts magnetic field into joule. And the same way here, the energy level splitting here, delta E, will be minus mu b, the Bohr magneton, times the magnetic field. It's a negative, meaning that the energy went down relative to the energy that it was unsplit. So now, if you look at the spectrum in a magnetic field, so this is with a magnetic field b, we'll have a transition from here to here. Get a little messy here. <laughs> Maybe I should use a different color. What do you think? All right, let's use a different color. Well, what kind of color do we want here? Uh, let's use... I don't know, yellow? See how yellow lo looks. All right, so, yeah, it's all right. So it goes up like this. There's one transition. Here's another transition. And here's a third transition. So we'll expect to find three peaks. And the center one, 
this one that goes from here to here where m sub l equals 0 that will be at the same frequency as before and then there'll be one at a lower energy corresponding to this transition and a one at higher energy corresponding to this transition in other words if this occurs at say omega 0 some frequency 0 this then will be omega 0 right here so that's the case where you have a singlet singlet transition and what happens you split the energy level so when you do a spectrum instead of a single in this case you get three corresponding to the three different values of m sub l or equivalently the three different values of m sub j okay that's two are from a singlet state now let's consider the fa uh, when we have no longer just a singlet state but we have say a, um, a doublet or a triplet or something like that that used to be called the anomalous Zeeman of split uh, effect, of Zeeman splitting, and now we're going to or from non-singlet states. Well, the energy level s separation is very similar to what's before, except you have this additional factor here, this g sub j, mu sub j, b, m sub j. Now you can't, since it's not a singlet state, s is not equal to zero. Now you have to distinguish between L and J, and here it's the M sub J quantum number. Well, what's this G sub J? That's called the Lande, that should be a accent grave, I think, over the E, uh, the Lande G factor. And how do you figure that out? Well, the Lande G factor will depend on the values of J, S, and L by this equation here. And a, a useful approximation is that for a unpaired electron, we have G sub E, that's, that's uh, right here, equal to 2. So this term comes to be about equal to 1. And so the Lande G factor just depends on J, S, and L. So let's look at an example for that particular case. Let's say, look for a transition between a doublet, 2S, 1 half, and I still have the yellow color here. Let me ch change to white. So there's that one. And let's make the transition up here to a doublet P one half. So let's decode this. Uh, this is S equal one half. That's what that doublet means. L is equal to one. J is equal to one half. And M sub J then could be minus one half or plus one half. If we decode this, S is equal to 1 half, L is equal to 0, J is equal to 1 half, so M sub J could be plus 1 half or minus 1 half. So there are actually two levels here, like that. And if we look at the spectrum here, we'll look at various values here. So these are the allowed transitions the m sub j going here by uh, changing by zip one and so on and if we look at a spectrum uh, actually measure intensity versus frequency we'll see a single peak here corresponding to all these transitions now let's apply a magnetic field b to this what's going to happen well let's go back and look at our equation here the value of m sub j is going to govern the energy level splitting, so depending on what m sub j is, we'll either get uh, a splitting up or down depending on whether m sub j is positive or negative. So let's draw these lines here. So there is the energy level if the system was not split, just the same energy level, but now one of these levels goes up and one of these levels goes down like that and the same way here one of these levels goes up and one of these levels goes down like that the, the positive value of m sub l or m sub j in this case plus one half will be the higher energy because delta e is proportional to m sub j and this would be the minus one half down here same way here plus one half and minus one half and this energy level splitting here, this delta E, will be mu, well, G sub J, we'll figure whatever that is, times mu sub B, that's constant, times magnetic field, times one half. That's the value of M sub J. That's what that splitting is. This splitting going down in energy will be minus that, same way here. But note that G sub J for the P state 
will be different from g sub j in the ground state. So these splittings will be different. Why is that? Well, the L, the S, and the J values are different for those two states, and the G sub J value depends upon the L, the S, and the J values. So if we now look at a spectrum here, we'll look at intensity versus frequency. What do we have? Well, maybe you can see that we have one. We have, you know, there's that stupid pen again. Let me get rid of that. We'll draw one up here. We have one. We have two. We have three, and here we have four. So we have four lines, and this will be centered right here. If this is omega zero, the center line, the center line here, which doesn't appear, it's shifted both up and down from the center line, omega zero is that. So put this system in a magnetic field, this, the absorption line or the emission line will be split. It'll go from a single absorption peak to four of them. And that's interesting. So just to summarize, uh, the splitting levels of these anomalous, where you're going from non-singlet state, non-singlet state, to, is governed by the value of m sub j. Yeah, there it is, m sub j. And again, uh, the Zeeman selection rules are just essentially the same as we had for the normal ones. We cannot have a change in multiplicity. If we have a certain set of unpaired electrons, then that they can't pair up when they go from one state to another. Delta S has to be zero. Delta L, zero or plus or minus one. Delta J, zero or plus or minus one. And delta M to J has to be zero or plus or minus one, except for the zero, zero transitions forbidden if delta J is zero. So those are the selection rules. That same one will actually now go through some examples and actually calculate energy level splittings.